Welcome to the first episode of Sports Center with Jay and Dan, Season 4. On this momentous occasion, we're reminded that only the finest in television entertainment are awarded a fourth season. Jay and Dan are proud to join the pantheon of television greats like The O.C. Season 4, Last Man Standing Season 4, Mind of Mencia Season 4, Last Call with Carson Daly Season 4, and Rod Smith's Extreme Fishing Challenge Season 4. Enjoy Jay and Dan Season 4. Sports Center with Jay and Dan brought to you by McDonald's. Yes, season four begins, and it's well known if you make it to four seasons, syndication money starts Ooh, to roll in. That is going to be beautiful. All those residuals. Uh, mm, thank you, Bell. <laughs> uh, so why don't we start with uh, Toronto Raptors? You okay. know what? I watched game four when the Raptors came back and tied the series. Yeah. With our good friend Gurdip, and I was... I was uh, faced with an entire table of McDonald's. Right. It was the Gurdip best had... viewing experience of my life. That's what Gurdip does. He has everyone over. McDonald's on the menu. It's a great party. I didn't get invited. Thanks, Gurdip. Game five, however, uh, not so exciting if you're a Toronto Raptors fan, unfortunately, because uh, uh, the highs of Saturday night's McDonald's event with Dan <laughs> We're met with the lows of Monday. Kyle 0 with 3. Tough first quarter for the Raps in this one. Norm Powell. He's, Norm Powell just had a bad series, but here, this should have been a goaltend on Daniel Tice. Celts go back the other way. There's obviously no goaltend called. And Marcus Smart throws it down over OG Anunobi. And uh, it would just get worse from there. Raps put up just 11 points in the opening quarter. Shot just 20%. Second quarter, more from Boston. Kemba Walker kicking it out. Celts working around Jason Tatum for three. Boston's up by 21 points. Then OG spins and cannot score. And here come the Celts in transition. Once again, it is smart. This three-pointer will open up a 26-point Boston Celtic lead. Third quarter now, Pascal Siakam. Off the Anunobi miss. Gets the put back to go. Then Freddie Van Vliet, friend of Sports Center with Jane Dan, brought to you by McDonald's, now in its fourth season. Tough basket there. Gets it to drop. Then Lowry will find Powell. Beautiful assist from Lowry here. Raps hanging in there. Beautiful pass that time. Lowry getting into the third. But as the third quarter winds down, Kemba Walker. Look at that crossover on Matt Thomas. For three, Celts back up by 27. The story of the game for the Toronto Raptors were their shooting troubles. Matt Thomas, no. Terrence Davis got some time in this one. You're going to see a couple of misses from him. Raptors just 12 of 40 from distance. Shot under 40% from the field in total. That look says it all. And their D, this highlight here pretty much says it all as Brown. Just kind of strolls in and scores. Nurse gets teed up here. He's frustrated. Just an overall night that the Raptors and their fans would love to forget. Fred Van Vliet now. Oh, we're going to check this out first. The Raptors, as I mentioned, down 27 at halftime, meaning it was the 25th time in the playoffs that they've been down by 10 or more at the break. And uh, according to Hound Dog, our stats guy, who's been with us for all four seasons of this show, when that happens, the Raptors are 0-25. You know, Coach Nurse makes a great point. They were down 2-0 in the series. Uh, they barely won game three, but they evened up the series. Maybe they can do it again. Uh, the 11 points in the first quarter for the Raps, second lowest total in a playoff quarter in franchise history. Game one of the NHL's Eastern Conference Final went Monday night in Alberta as the Isles and Bolts did the league's first ever bubble bounce, leaving the Toronto bubble and jumping into Edmonton's Tampa the league's highest scoring team in the regular season, the Isles, the league's most Barry Trotz coach team. Isles haven't, well, they're coming off a game seven win, so that was on Saturday. 
Bolts haven't played in a week, but Andre Vasilevsky still had some assistance before the morning skate, less than two minutes in. So yes, you have a very rested Bolts team. We're waiting to pounce. Braden Point drives wide and scores on Thomas Grice. Lightning lost just two games over the first two rounds. Midway through the frame, Bolts power play. Victor Hedman scores. Grice screened by a couple of players on that one. Grice gave up three goals and nine shots. You're done. Simeon Varlamov into the game. 3 1 Lightning through one. Oh! Second period. Hedman puts it on net. And Point scores his second of the game. A point motion for the puck before the shot was taken. Hmm. And you can clearly see him say, What a luck! What a luck! 5 1 Bolts through two. Mid third. Nikita Kucherov breaks up a pass in his own zone. Back the other way with point. Drives and Kucherov scores. Kucherov, great defensive play to force the turnover, then directs it to point with the touch pass. This is gorgeous here. Kucherov and point, each with four points in this game. Minutes later, Point takes it off. Lontaze sets up Andre Palat for Tampa's. They're at the stage where they don't even celebrate the goals they scored that night. Kucherov and Point duo each picked up their fifth point of the night. Isles allow eight as the Lightning take game one quite easily. Kucherov and Point become the first pair of teammates with 15 assists each through the team's first 14 playoff games since Messier and Gretzky in the 80s. Game two goes Wednesday. The Toronto Blue Jays are already 40 games into a 60-game season, yet they met the Yankees for the first time Monday night. And 10 of the Jays' last 20 games are against those Yankees. But guess what? These Bronx Bombers, not as terrifying as they're supposed to be. Jays actually have hit more home runs, they've scored more runs, and they sit a game up on the Yankees in the AL East. To Buffalo. Knows how much you and I like those, the Jays place Teoscar Hernandez on the 10-day injured list with a left oblique strain. He's expected to have a second MRI later this week. Jays down 6-2 in the sixth. They've managed to come from behind and win 13 times this season. That's the second most in the American League. Vladdy Guerrero Jr. steps up with the bases loaded. And single to right. That plates a pair and cuts the lead to one. With second base open, Vladdy. There's the slider. He's safe. Slides in. Head of the throw. That's his first stolen base of the season. Puts two runners in scoring position. Luis Guriel still at the dish. It's a single to shallow left. Plates a run. Guerrero Jr. held the third. Game is tied at six. After a walk, loaded the bases once again. Travis Shaw. Single brings home two more runs. Six runs in the inning. Jays take the lead. After another walk, loaded the bases. Danny Jansen steps up, holding the get out stick. And a drive. Left center field. Gone. Jansen hits his first ever grand slam, capping off a 10 run inning. Jays take a 12 7 and win their 14th cumber behind game this season. Well, look where they are. Two games ahead of the Yankees. Yeah. You know, since winning the World Series in 93, Toronto hasn't finished ahead of. Toronto has finished ahead of New York just twice in 26 seasons. Three weeks ago, the Yankees were 10 games over 500 and leading the AL East. They've since gone 5 and 14. Still to come after a disappointing game two loss. Why and the Clippers look to bounce back in game three against the Nuggets. Highlights are next. Clippers and Nuggets game three series tied at a game each. Kitchener's Jamal Murray coming off a 27-point effort in game two. First quarter, Murray blows by Kwai for the lay-in. Late in the quarter, Murray to Nikola Jokic. No look feed to Monte Morris. Jokic 14.6 assists in the first half. Late in the half. Jokic turns it over. Kwai finds Paul George. Part of a 12-2 Clippers run. George finished with a team-high 32 points.
Friends and family section, or just family. In the third, off a miss, Jokic to Jeremy Grant, who throws it down. Jokic, 32 points, finished two assists shy of a triple double. Late in the quarter. Two assists away from a triple double. A double on the wing quarter, taking it home. That one. <laughs> oh, that was Dad didn't really react. Uh, under five to go. Kwai. Nice dish to Evica Zubat. Massive dunk. Next Clippers possession. Kwai. Jumper. LA up three. Murray drives. Rejected by Kwai. This is the play everyone's talking about because Kwai blocked it with his middle finger. 23 points, 14 boards, two huge blocks as the Clippers take a 2-1 series lead. I'm probably playing some of the best golf I've ever played. The understatement of the year from Dustin Johnson, who has fully dominated the final three-week stretch of the FedEx Cup playoffs with a win two weeks ago, a runner-up in a playoff a week ago, and Monday a chance to cap off a Tour Championship victory, a FedEx Cup title, and a three-week money haul of just under $18 million. East Lake. This is where Championship There's Monday no took place. Only the one major championship counting this DJ season. justifiably uh, this confident best. heading to the final oh, round. Oh. You know, one of my favorite commercials on TSN right now is the RBC commercial with Come Dustin on, Johnson where he's oh, driving the ball off the tee and then it goes into the hole. So it's a hole in one off the tee and he just sort of looks at the camera and just nods. <laughs> I thought that was a pretty cool premise for a commercial, so well done, RBC. Here's uh, DJ setting up his another birdie to get to two under for the day. World number three, Justin Thomas, playing in the second last group. Started five shots off the pace, second shot on three. And that will work. He closed one shot closer after rolling in the birdie, then another opportunity, the 2017 FedEx winner, putting some pressure on Johnson. Earlier, Canadian Mackenzie Hughes on three in his East Lake debut. This is his second shot on the par four. And that's beautiful stuff. He would collect his second birdie of the day, then eyeing Eagle on six. No problem for the Dundas, Ontario native. Shot a 67, finished eight under for the tournament, made just over $600,000. Back to DJ. Struggled to drive the ball. Hitting just two fairways in the second round. This one headed toward the trees. Johnson would bogey, cutting the lead to just three. More trouble on 16 after the errant tee shot. Okay, he got pretty clean. This two right to the hole. Struggled to drive in the back nine. That's what I meant. DJ would escape with Park and then a mere formality. 18th, DJ. One last birdie to become the 2020 FedEx Cup champion. And you know what that means. He takes home a cool 15 million bucks. Hey, uh, Hound Dog, who finished last? Horschel did finish last. So Horschel was last after the third round. Mm -hmm. He finishes last because he knew 400 grand for the last place guy in that tournament. And the Canadian picking up $620,000. Wow. Yeah. Unreal. I uh, wish I was better at golf. Bobby Ryan's been named the Bill Masterton Memorial Trophy winner for the 2019-2020 season. It is awarded every season to the player who best exemplifies the qualities of perseverance, sportsmanship, and dedication to hockey. Ryan took a leave of absence from the Sens in November to enter the player assistance program, citing issues with alcohol abuse. The 33-year-old admitted he thought he might have played his last game in the NHL once he took the leave. But he returned to the ice in late February and scored a hat trick in his first home game back with the team. I told my wife, you know, five years ago, uh, because of her, I, I could feel myself and, and see myself starting to become the man that I wanted to be. And, and I took a detour, uh, but I'm back. I'm back and I'm trying to get better every day. And, and you know, every day I wake up and go through this process and therapy and, and everything is so that I can be better for the two of you and, and hockey will always come second to that um, you know and, and I love all of you and uh, and thank you 
That uh, hat trick in his return game, one of the best moments of the season. And all three nominees were so worthy. Stephen Johns, the Dallas Stars, missed all of last season, part of this season with post-concussion headaches. His return was super emotional. You may remember his interview. And then uh, Oscar Lindblom, how, how could yep. you leave him out? He's uh, came back for game six of the East semifinal against the Isles. Obviously incredibly emotional. Both teams giving him the stick tap. So, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty amazing individuals for sure coming mm -hmm. back from their perseverance for sure. Uh, according to Ian Rappaport of the NFL Network, the Arizona Cardinals and DeAndre Hopkins are closing in on a contract extension. Star wide receiver was acquired in the offseason from Houston, where he had 104 receptions, seven touchdowns, and just over 1,100 yards last season. 100, 100 yards. Uh, he has three years left on his current deal at a base salary of 12.5, 13.5, and 13.9. And the speculation was he wanted to renegotiate that deal because he's obviously underpaid. And uh, Bill O'Brien and, and, and the Houston Texans decided to move him, which I think was, I don't get it. And what are the, uh, the comparisons here? We've got uh, Cowboys uh, receiver Amari Cooper signed a $100 million deal. Right, so tw about $20 million a year. Mm -hmm. Julio Jones making about $22 million yeah. a year. DeAndre making 12. million. Doesn't really make that much sense. Uh, and also, the Houston Texans will not have DeAndre Jordan. When, or DeAndre Hopkins, rather. <laughs> DeAndre Jordan. DeAndre Hopkins this Thursday when the Texans take on the Chiefs to kick off the NFL season. DeAndre Jordan. Can't believe the uh, NFL season's playing here. Playing for Brooklyn. Yeah. It's going to be great. And uh, Timber, the Chiefs, one of the cities the that will, have, will have fans. Yeah. We've, uh, we've been going through all the cities. Some will have fans, some won't. Yeah, like 6,000 or 25% capacity. 22 percent 16,000 people okay so yeah actually that'll be quite a few be interesting actually really interesting to see how it looks uh monday was labor day so you know what we're gonna do we're gonna look at some of the best plays during the most interesting summer in sports in the top 10. Summer doesn't officially end until September 22nd, but uh, come on. Once the kids go back to school, it's over. Admit it. We should actually get a redo on the summer of 2020. So in 2021, we get two summers. Boomsies. And hopefully highlights with fans as every single play in the top 10 plays this summer lacks any fans in the stands. interesting because that's when a lot of these unwritten rules were, were put into play. Um, oh, over the shoulder catch made down the right field line. How about that play? Manny Machado in the shift makes the catch. Manny the magician. How does he catch this ball? 
poke check by Tanev, and Bo Horvat comes to center shorthanded. Horvat one on one to the Blues line. A beautiful toe drag around. Schwartz goes to the goal. He scores. Unbelievable goal for the captain, Bo Horvat, shorthanded. Who is this guy? Who put the cape on Bo Horvat's back? Oh my God. This is the goal of the playoffs so far. 0.5 to go in game three. OG with a look. Got it. OG and Anobi at the buzzer. OG. Oh my. And they have life in the series and life in the bubble. So, uh, Florida Panthers. Whenever they show their highlights from any time in their history, they'll just say, yeah, yeah, it was 2020. 2020, no fans. That's... Oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> I did not know where you were going. <laughs> I got there. It was a bit of a walk. We got there. Yes. Brought to you by McDelivery, Braden Point, Nikita Kucherov combining for 10 points as the Lightning take game one, 8-2 over the aisles. By the way, uh, our friend Reed Wilkins of 6.30 Chet in Edmonton had a great stat. Uh, our friend Jordan Everly scored his first ever playoff goal at Rogers Place on Monday. Huh. As member, of course, from the New York Times. Rays and Nats, Charlie Morton's second start since coming off the injured list. He was at three weeks with right shoulder inflammation. Adam leading off the first. Oh, oh, oh. with the curve. Yikes. Top five, Brandon Lau sends one to left. Michael A. Taylor tracking, tracking. Got it before he runs out of room. Uh, Max Scherzer pitching for the Nats. And Scherzer, he throws one just like the curve that Morton threw. Look at that. Chases Joey Wendell in the fifth, in the seventh. Watch the movement on that changeup. Yikes. Uh, Scherzer, seven innings of shutout ball, struck out eight, and scattering six hits as Washington takes it. Um, with all seven Canadian NHL teams done for the year, GMs now look for ways to improve their roster during this uh, shortened offseason. And with a plethora of goaltenders set to hit the market, it's a perfect time to check in with our resident tender and good friend. And this week's podcast guest, too. Check it out. It's time for Tasteful Nudes with Jamie Noodles McLennan. If you're asking me, it should be Jacob Markstrom. This guy has been your MVP for two years in a row. He's helped carry that team, get it to the next level. And I know Thatcher Demko was fantastic those last three games. And to me, he is a budding star in the National Hockey League. But Jacob Markstrom has arrived as an elite goaltender. He's 29 years old. He's a pending unrestricted free agent. I think you can get something done and, and still figure out the expansion situation. So if I'm the Vancouver Canucks, I don't want to lose a guy like Jacob Markstrom where you've made so much ground moving forward as a team and an organization. You don't want to take a step back if Thatcher Demko ends up stubbing his toe learning how to be a starter in the National Hockey League. For me, it would have to be the Edmonton Oilers. And the reason being is you've got Koskinen at $4.5 million for another year. So you already have somebody that can give you, let's say, 30 to 45 games. I think Matt Murray is a platoon goaltender. I don't see him as a standalone starter. So, you know, he's a guy that played very well when Marc-Andre Fleury was there. He's played well or been challenged by Tristan Jari and, and, and given them good minutes when he's been pressed. So he has to play in a platoon system. I think the Edmonton Oilers are obviously going to try and fit somebody in there. Absence of Mike Smith is unrestricted. Uh, I think the best fit for Matt Murray, if he's on the move, would be the Edmonton Oilers because they need to upgrade that position. They needed a save at critical times against the Chicago Blackhawks. And believe me, that was only one of their problems, but they did need a big save at the right time. And I think Matt Murray is battle tested, but he still needs to prove that he can be consistent and he's young enough to do that. 
I know this isn't a sexy answer, but I think it's going to be in Toronto. And when you have to take a look at it, if you're Kyle Dubas, um, you have to take a look at the big picture. Who are you going to replace Frederick Anderson with, and what is it going to cost? Uh, you know, Jacob Markstrom is the number one unrestricted free agent on the market. Now, if Vancouver signs him, he's done. Robin Leonard, same scenario. I would argue that he's probably going to be with the Vegas Golden Knights. So now you start to look around the league. Who's available and at what price point? And let's say a guy like Braden Holtby is available and you can get him at a decent price point. Are you convinced that he's going to play better than Frederick Anderson because he hasn't statistically in the last couple of years? So what I know if I'm Kyle Dubas is I've got a guy who can play 55 to 60 games, money in the bank. Yes, he hasn't gotten over that threshold, and that's something that certainly is a, a focus here in Toronto. But it's not all on him. That team has to be better. I think Kyle will try and build the team a little bit out, a little bit more depth and to help his goaltender out. So for me, I'm only doing something with Frederick Anderson if it's an upgrade in that position, not uh, an equal part, like an equal goaltender. So I don't see a, an upgrade in that position unless Jacob Markstrom is signed here. And uh, you can catch Jamie the rest of that interview on our podcast this week. He mm -hmm. was great. And he tells us when he thinks next season's gonna start in the NHL. He has a firm date. He does. But you gotta listen to find out when it is. We're not going to tell you right now. But when we come back, the Jennies season four. And here's our new graphic for season. Oh, Tim didn't get the memo. So the old Jennies graphic for you. Season four Jennies. Reese Hawk skins grounded a short. Andres Jimenez. Great play. Jenny's not quite good enough to be highlighted tonight. Not bad enough to be the worst player tonight. KHL. It's happening. Sergei Shimakov with the lacrosse style goal. They uh, got some fans in the stands. Yeah, they've got a, a smattering of people. You don't see this every day. Kyle Freeling gets Jake Cronenworth to fall over on a check swing strikeout. Rays, Nats, your favorite uh, player, Brock Holt. Brock Holt! Lines it, uh, a little blooper to left, Austin Meadows. Makes the catch, that's Austin Meadows. Pascal Siakam did his best Shawn Michaels impression. Right here. The sweet chin music. Yeah, that is exactly Exactly like the Heartbreak Kid. Isles, Moltz, Braden, Point. What a goal. The guy said you're watching him become a superstar right before your eyes. I think the guy was James Duffy. <laughs> Andre I said the guy's a... Oh, I thought you said the guy. The guy said. <laughs> I thought, well, maybe you and James aren't on speaking terms. <laughs> Just refused to say his name. Uh, Rockies Padres. Grounder to third. Manny Machado tags the runner. And gets the other one at first for the double play. Manny Machado. You know the Padres are making it into a lot of the Jannies. Mm -hmm. They have exciting, exciting players. Everyone kind of, uh, well, I was going to say they made fun of Machado for signing their he signed for a lot of money. Yeah, and it's, and it's San Diego. It's San Diego. But they're never good. But maybe they're good now. And I really like those uniforms. Highlight of the night, coming up. This week's Jane Dan podcast, uh, brought to you by McDonald's, is our first podcast together in like three months. Yeah, and we had Jamie Noodles McLennan on. He was fantastic. It's the worst of the day. This is classic on right fairway bunker. Go for it. Nope, sees lip sees. Ball still in the trap sees. Could have stayed under the lip too. John Rom was swearing his head off all day. But it was hit so hard, David, that I don't think anything was going to hold. This didn't go well. No. That's the worst play of the day. Bounce off and run into Rom again. Highlight of the night. We're going to the bubble. 
in Orlando. Jalen Brown rises up over OG Brown for the dunk. Throws it down. Nick Nurse needs a timeout here. Raptors right? blown out in game this five. That's your highlight of the, the night. Hound Doc pointed out Ron still made three million today. So. Yes, oh, it's yeah. okay. <laughs> it wasn't so bad. Um, you blew it. Uh, this uh, list was compiled by G Bone. Jay, your hair was out of place? Yeah. Just happy to still have it. During the DeAndre Hopkins chat, I had trouble saying 1,100 yards. <laughs> and then you mixed up DeAndre, DeAndre Hopkins and Brooklyn Net Center, DeAndre Jordan. Yes, I did. <laughs> Um, but I'm excited about the start of the NFL season. This Thursday, man, it's... it's yeah, so we went through it. the list. A lot of teams have like 25%, so they're going to have around 6,000 fans. Some with no fans. The majority have no fans. Yeah. At least for the first couple of weeks. We're happy for you, the fans at home. That's Thanks right. for joining us for three seasons. Let's make it, I don't know, at least one more. <laughs> what up?